Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and this week's plan of the week is Philodendron Arubicin's Pink Princess. This is probably one of the most highly sought after plants on the market that I have in my home as of right now, and I totally get it. This plant is freaking gorgeous with that bright pink variegation and that black coloration that the new leaves have. Of course, that black color does fade back to a green over time, but it is something to really celebrate. It's so beautiful, and I do understand completely why people are so head over heels for this plant. The one thing I do want to say right off the bat before we even really get into the care tips is that the variegation on this plant is, I don't want to say unstable. I feel like unstable is the wrong word for it, but it has a mind of its own. So while it never really seems to go away, it <laughs> it does what it wants. So you can see on like my lower plant when I first got it, it was really just like all green leaves and it was just very, for lack of a better term, boring looking compared to the way it looks at the top. But as it started to get a little older and it started to put off some of these pink leaves, it really was just like going back and forth between like pink leaf, plain green leaf, pink leaf. I think there was a plain green leaf in here somewhere that had fallen off and then just suddenly it's spitting out these super bright pink leaves and now we're back to just some like splashy leaves. They're still beautiful, but this plant really has a mind of its own. So I don't want someone to shell out a lot of money and expect it to just be like pink forever and just like fully pink. It's not gonna happen like that. It's going to bounce back and forth, in my experience at least. I've been growing this plant for ooh, probably about three years. It was one of the first plants that I got when I started doing YouTube. So it's, this is going on three years now. So you can see roughly how much you could expect your philodendron pink princesses to grow in three years time. I did actually cut it at one point. You can see right here where I chopped it and it put off some new growth and that's where we've grown all the way back up here. So it is very easy to propagate and does recover very quickly as you can see. So into the actual care about this plant. So as far as the light goes, the lighting is probably the most important thing if you'd want to keep this variegation vibrant. I can't say if that's a fact, I'm just speaking from experience that the more light I give this plant, the more likely it has seemed to put off more variegation. So um, these lower leaves, I was growing the plant all around my home or in west a western window I was growing it for a while. And then really this beautiful clump of leaves up at the top here that probably isn't even on camera that well. Um, those really appeared ever since I moved it under my Soltex Solutions aspect light, which I have behind me, which is what is illuminating all of this bright yellow light back here. And I will leave a link in my description. You can get 15% off your own Soltex Solutions aspect light if you're looking to get one yourself. But this plant really seems to like that artificial light. In fact, I'd say the most beautiful leaves on this plant have 100% come after I've moved it under that artificial light. So more light seems to be better. Although, like I said, it was growing in a western facing window and it seemed to, to cut it, but this lighting seems to really get the job done. As far as watering goes, I am not watering this plant that often. I'm probably watering it, mm, I would say once a week is a little too much for what I'm giving it. Keeping in mind, it's kind of hidden. So it's sitting in this plant display behind me here and it's, it's in a six inch terracotta pot and this pot is kind of hidden beneath some other plants so I don't really have visual access to it so I do really have to get in there to check on it and these lower leaves are very vocal with me they will kind of curl up a little bit similar to like a syndapsis pictus would if it's lacking water I wouldn't necessarily recommend getting to that point because I'm assuming many people's philodendron pink princesses are a lot smaller than mine so you probably wouldn't want to risk, you know, possibly losing some lower leaves from underwatering. But basically, it's better to underwater than overwater in pretty much any cases for your plants. But specifically with aroids, philodendrons in general, I would say underwatering is going to be so much better than overwatering. If you are overwatering your philodendron pink princess, you're going to notice these dark leaves start to get sickly yellow looking and they will fall off and it's just not going to be fun. And you can see that I've, I have really lost like all the leaves on the lower stem, which does happen over time. It totally happens. Uh, but I could probably pay closer attention to this plant and maybe water it a little bit more often than just leave it be. So I'm watering my philodendron pink princess. We're going, we're getting off on a tangent, but I'm watering my pink princess probably like every two weeks. But I would say I should be a little bit more 
um, I should be paying a little bit more attention. I should probably be watering this plant roughly every 10 days with the conditions that I have it in. The soil is pretty important too. Um, this is, you know, a hard to find plant. I wouldn't necessarily call it rare because it's like massively cultivated at this point. It's not rare at all, but um, it's hard. To, it's hard to get. That's true. It's hard to get for a good price. It's not hard to get, but it's hard to get for a good price. I would recommend using a very well draining mixture. I would use myself probably roughly like two parts potting soil to one part perlite to one part orchid bark, just kind of a general ratio that would be really well suited for most aroids but this philodendron pink princess is really going to appreciate that allowing its roots to really breathe and grab onto that orchid bark material that um, it kind of would in nature you could also allow this plant to climb up a moss pole you can see how i kind of have mine just staked on a bamboo stake and that's totally fine it's just kind of a way of keeping it upright and allowing it to grow towards the light um, but if I wanted to do this plant the very best for it, I probably could have gotten it a moss pole a couple of years ago when I got in it and allowed it to climb up as these aerial roots that are all along the plant would have attached themselves into the moss pole and then it would feel like it's climbing up something as it would in nature and allow its leaves to get even larger and perhaps have even more variegation, although I don't know if that's true. I do fertilize my philodendron pink princess. I'm pretty lazy about it. I do it roughly once a month with an organic fertilizer, uh, but I probably should be doing it bi-weekly if I really want it to give me some good growth. But I really only fertilize my plants after I've had them for a full year because that soil, when I'm getting them and I'm potting them up, it's fresh soil. It's got some nice nutrients in it. So I can be a little hands off with the fertilizing the first year. But as I have had this uh, philodendron for a couple of years now, I do really want to keep up with the nutrients. Pests, I don't think I've ever had a pest on this plant and thank goodness because that would be a nightmare But uh, this has been a really resilient plant. The leaves are very thick compared to some other philodendrons So that probably has something to do with it But even the new leaves have not attracted thrips, which is the biggest issue that I have with my philodendrons The new leaves attracting thrips, which is just not fun because then they come in looking all nasty but this is a really awesome plant really easy to grow. I promise you it's really easy to grow I just, I know that it comes with a hefty price tag, like literally a hefty price tag. So just something to keep in mind. I want you to feel confident about it. If you do want to bite the bullet and go ahead and get this plant, or if you are already growing this plant in your home, I want you to feel confident that you can successfully grow it because I've been successfully growing it for three years and I honestly barely think about this plant. I let it do its thing and it just seems to be okay with me doing that. So if you have any tips for growing philodendron pink princess in your home, I would really love to hear as this is a very popular plant and a lot of people will grow it or are looking to grow it. So I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great time.